So we've talked about one of the Q2B goals, and that, of course, is to accelerate application discovery and development. But one of the things that's really important is that we as an entire group, as I mentioned yesterday, develop and have a common understanding of the facts around quantum computing. So quantum computers are not general purpose processors, they're accelerators, and they're designed to address a particular class of problems. And we're going to spend some time, we spent time yesterday at the boot camp talking about that and we'll continue to do that today. And I think some of that sentiment will be reinforced by John Preskill this morning in his keynote address. During the course of two day in particular, all of the major powerhouses, the technology firms that are developing quantum computing systems are going to be spending time with you, giving you a state of the art on what they're doing with quantum computing resources in terms of hardware development and application development. So you get, a, you get a lot of that today as well. And then finally, in human evolutionary biology, we have these competing drives to either collaborate or to compete. And in fact, right now, with the state of technology where it is in quantum computing, it makes a lot of sense. It's very rational to collaborate instead of compete. So we all jointly have a mission that we're all trying to accomplish together, and no one entity is going to have the ability to kind of run away and, and dominate the market. So really what we're trying to do is to carry on the sentiment that, that has really driven theoretical physics and experimental physics for a long, long time, which is this kind of global trust and collaboration that's shared among the parties in that. So we're really trying to continue that spirit uh, within Q2B. So very, very importantly, um, this conference would not have been possible without the anchor sponsorship of the Air Force Research Laboratory. And so I think uh, we feel really indebted for that. This is a very strong strategic and material signal. Having AFRL as the anchor sponsor is really important because as we all know, the US government in general and the Department of Defense more specifically has a history of being a very early backer in some of the most important emerging technologies that we deal with every day as, as consumers and sort of citizens. And so we're really happy about that. And I'd like to in particular... <laughs> and in particular, I'd like to thank Colonel Tim Lawrence, um, who runs the largest directorate within Air Force, the Air Force Research Laboratory, for coming up with the idea for planting AFRL's, AFRL's flag here and for, and for having General Cooley, the commander of the Air Force Research Lab, give a keynote address today. So we're really, really happy about this and um, we're looking forward to having AFRL be a, a returning major participant and leader in this conference. In addition to that, this conference wouldn't have been possible without the very large technology heavyweights in quantum computing getting behind this and collaborating, and that's specifically IBM, Microsoft, and Google, and you hear from all of them today. So a big thank you to those firms. So in addition, there are hardware startups uh, which are aggressively taking differentiated approaches to building quantum computers, and they have also backed Q2B again for, for a second year. So we'd like to thank Rigetti, D-Wave, and IonQ for doing that. We'd also like to thank our friends from across the ocean, the Dutch government, for, uh, for also um, sponsoring this year. So thank you very much for that. And then finally, there's targeted sponsorships that were backed by uh, AeroQ, City, and Inside Quantum Technology. So thanks again to everybody. Most importantly, on this slide and the next, we show the, uh, the logos of all of the groups that, that, are, uh, that are attending. So um, all of you hopefully got a mention here, and if not, it means you registered sometime after 5 p.m. on Friday. But if you did, you're still very welcome. Uh, just in terms of the, the demographic, um, the most important groups, the most important kind of subgroups here, and actually I think we're up to like 380 attendees. Last year we had 250. We're not just into the numerics of this, but it does show an increased awareness and demand for exploring quantum computing. But really, most importantly, the enterprises and government agencies that 
really are going to be the initial adopters of this technology, the groups that have R&D budgets, that, that have a longer product life cycle and, and, and need to explore this now. This is really the lifeblood, and this is what Q2B is all about. So we're really happy about that kind of presence. And also the universities and labs, it is really this, this fundamental research that needs to continue to be invested in that's, um, that's really important. And uh, on one of our panels today, Joe Bros. Um, from the Quantum Economic Development Corporation is going to be talking uh, a little bit about that, also a dual-hatted moderator and speaker, to talk about what the U.S. government is, is doing to try to push all that forward. Um, so having said all that, um, the boot camp was great. If you missed it yesterday, um, please attend next year, but this was really the basic training on quantum programming and processing. Um, the, the large hardware vendors brief their, their dev kits, um, which is really abstracting away all the complexity of quantum programming. Now today, we're starting off with a keynote address from John Preskill, followed by General Cooley, and then you're going to be hearing from all of the large hardware and si quantum computing system developers. In addition, we've got two industry panels. Tomorrow's a very interesting day, and this is a new upgrade or addition to Q2B in that we're having focused half-day workshops on the four problem classes that, are being, that have been identified as, as types of problems that have the potential to be sped up with quantum processing. Um, and so this is really going to be interesting for quantum algorithms researchers and anyone who wants to get uh, more deep into the technical weeds on, uh, on specific applications. And we'll, we'll give a little bit more briefing on that tomorrow morning when we kick off. Um, importantly tonight, one thing that was uh, really a, a good time last year was the happy hour that we organized, and so we're having that again this year. And we encourage everyone to stay for that. It's a great social event and networking event, and, and so we've got very large breaks during the day. It's not too stressful, and then we can all relax together in the evening. And uh, that's it for me. Now, as, now, turning on, I would like to now um, introduce today's keynote speaker, uh, John Preskill. No one needs, the, I think everyone in the audience knows John Preskill. And if I asked for a show of hands to see who doesn't know him, no one would do that because they'd be too embarrassed to admit it. So uh, I'm not going to read John's bio, but he is the Richard P. Feynman Professor of Theoretical Physics at Caltech. And he is really one of the uh, godfathers of uh, quantum computing. And we are lucky to have uh, three currently, and hopefully going on four, five, or six of his uh, past students uh, on staff with us at QCWare. So we're personally indebted, indebted to him for that. But uh, at this point, I'd like to turn things over to John Preskill.